Hey everyone, it's Jacob. Welcome to another daily vlog. It's my last day in Los Angeles, so shortly after I film this video, I'll be taking a plane back to uh, back to the Bay Area, where I haven't been <laughs> for a little while now. And one of the one of the things that that I like about the vlog, and hopefully one of the things that you can appreciate as well, is that I get to share ideas that are not really filtered. So you know, when I when I write a book, when I give a talk. I spend a lot of time thinking about through the ideas, filtering the ideas, making sure that they make sense, running it by other people before actually sharing it with the world. And basically with doing a, a vlog like this, it's unfiltered stuff. So these are ideas and concepts that I'm just thinking about, working on, not really sure if they make sense. And so I, I hope you can appreciate that, that that's the, the purpose of the vlog and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to challenge myself for 2020 is to share these ideas in their unfiltered form to see what people think, to have you guys challenge me on them, to question me on things, to agree with them if you agree with them. And today I wanted to do a video, I've been thinking about this a lot and th this is something that, that happened to me a few weeks ago. And I'm trying to come up with a, with a name for it and the, the best name that I can come up with is the fine print organization. And so what I want to ask you is, do you work for a fine print organization? So what does that mean? I think we all know the concept of fine print, right? You agree to do something, but did you read the fine print? And I had this experience recently with United Airlines and this isn't again meant to bash United Airlines, this is just what happened with United Airlines and I certainly think that this is true for a lot of organizations and a lot of different industries. So for United Airlines last year I was a global services member and for those of you not familiar with United Airlines, uh, if you're on Delta or American they, they all have their own um, you know tier status. Global services there is their like secret tier that is not published. So the highest tier that you can get on United Airlines is 1k and then above that their unofficial uh, top tier is global services which is which is what I was because I was flying a lot and speaking in a lot of conferences and events. And last year I slowed down just a little a little bit on, on United Airlines. And so this year I didn't get global services but what they allow you to do is they give you these challenges and they basically say if you spend this much money within a 90 day period then you can get your global services status back and I thought okay cool so I can you know I the challenge was to spend um, $18,000 between January 1st and March 31st so the deadline is not over yet and I'll still likely make it but I just wanted to share this story and so I had a couple trips planned and um, I spent just about eighteen thousand uh, dollars on on United Airlines in in January, and so I called United Airlines up and I say, "Hey guys, you know I'm, I'm pretty much almost at that eighteen thousand dollar mark. Um, I just wanted to confirm this with you if if that's correct, and you know just to just to make sure that what I'm seeing on my end is what they're seeing." And so they do a little bit of checking on their end and they say, "Actually, you didn't spend eighteen thousand dollars." You really only spent like fourteen thousand dollars, and I said, "What are you talking about? I have I have the receipts, I have the credit card statements. I have spent eighteen thousand dollars almost on United Airlines. I was short maybe like two hundred bucks." And then they're like, "Well, did you read the fine print?" I'm like, "What? What fine print?" It turns out that you can you have to spend eighteen thousand dollars on United Airlines, but this doesn't include any taxes and fees. This doesn't include any fuel surcharges, and so basically. As a, as a customer, I'm still spending the money, right? I'm still still spending the $18,000. Where the money goes, I don't know. If it goes to fuels, to taxes, to, you know, pilots, to wherever it wants to go, it doesn't matter to me. I am still spending the $18,000. But the fine print on United Airlines is that it doesn't include the taxes, which I still pay for. It doesn't include the fuel, which I still pay for. And not only that, but one of the flights that I booked was on United Airlines. But on one leg of the flight, it, there was a partner airline that I had to fly. So basically I had to fly from San Francisco to Frankfurt on United, and then from Frankfurt to Barcelona on, uh, on Lufthansa. Now, as a customer, again, I'm still spending the money. I still spent the $18,000. I booked everything directly from the United Airlines website. And then they tell me, well, since that airline wasn't United, the amount of money that you spent for that second leg is not actually going to count. Now, again, it's the fine print, 
right? So it's, you have to spend $18,000 on United, but um, it has to be, you know, if, if you book on United Airlines and you fly a second leg through a partner airline, that doesn't count. Uh, the taxes don't count. Any fees don't count. The fuel surcharges don't count. None of that counts. And so it's really annoying for a customer because you basically are telling me spend $18,000, I spend it, and then there's this fine print below it that says, well, actually, this is included, that's not included, that's not included. And it really is, I don't know, it's just not a great experience for a customer. And so really, what I wanted to, um, what I was thinking about is, how do we avoid creating these kind of fine print organizations? And do you work for a fine print organization? where you promise something to customers or you promise something to employees, but then there's the fine print that says, well, you know, you can have this, but, you know, these are the exclusions. You can have this, but if you do it like this, it doesn't apply. Why do we even need that stuff? I don't get it. Uh, and I'm curious what, what you guys think. Have you experienced this? Do you work for this type of an organization? Am I totally nuts on this? And I know we see this time and time again, um, I'm trying to think of a good example inside of an organization for employees. I mean, it's kind of like, um, it's sort of like flexible work programs, right? It's like, you know, we have a flexible work program, but the fine print is that it's, if you take advantage of it, you're going to be viewed as being lazy and not wanting to show up to work, right? That's the fine print. We have flexible work, but nobody really uses it because you're stigmatized for it, right? It's the, the fine print. Uh, for, for a customer. We have this special offer that you can get, but there's the fine print behind it. And I just really don't understand why we have to keep doing this for our employees, for our customers. Why can't we just be honest and upfront about it? This is why, you know, this also happens when we hire employees, right? We lie to them and tell them this fun story about what it's like to work at our companies. And then the fine print is, you know, what it's really like to be there. This is why I really appreciate any honesty and transparency that organizations have. Uh, with employees and with, and with customers. So that's kind of what's been noodling around in my mind uh, over the past few weeks because this is something that happened a few weeks ago and uh, you know I'm kind of get the fine print organization. But let me know what you think. Have you experienced this? Uh, am I totally nuts on this? Does this make sense? Should, you know, is the fine print stuff okay? Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below or wherever you're watching this and I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are And I think the next video that you'll be seeing from me I will hopefully be back home in the Bay Area. See you later